Some people who learn how efficacious the Sharangama mantra is decide to exclusively recite it and ignore all other aspects of cultivation. That's going overboard. In cultivation, no matter what dharma it is, you have to keep to the middle way. Don't do too much and don't fail to do enough. Although the mantra is definitely efficacious, still, you have to develop samadhi. The Sharangama Sutra describes how efficacious this mantra is, but it also explains the method of returning the hearing to listen to your own nature by cultivating perfect penetration of the ear organ. That's also extremely important. While you are reciting the mantra you should be returning your hearing to listen to your own nature. You must reflect within. Didn't I explain earlier how the mantra becomes the mind and the mind becomes the mantra? The mind and the mantra cannot be separated, they are non-dual. When you get there, then you can attain whatever you seek. Everything will go the way you want it to, and you will have success in whatever you undertake. When the mind and the mantra merge into one, then you have actually attained the samadhi of Chan meditation and have acquired real samadhi power. That is something you should know. Every line of the Sharangama mantra contains infinite meanings as well as infinite functions. You should realize that the Sharangama mantra is the most efficacious language in the world, the efficacious within the efficacious, the esoteric within the esoteric. It is an unsurpassed dharma treasure, the gem that can save living beings' lives. It embraces all that exists. From the Buddhas of the Ten Directions to the Avicii Hell, all the four kinds of sages and six sorts of common realms pay homage to the Sharangama mantra. None of the ten dharma realms transcends its scope. All categories of ghosts, spirits, dharma-protecting deities, hearers, conditioned enlightened ones, up to the Buddha vehicle are contained within the Sharangama mantra. The Sharangama mantra contains the names of ghost and spirit kings. When the names of those leaders are recited, all the ghosts and spirits in their retinues become very obedient and behave themselves. They don't dare to make trouble. Reciting the Sharangama mantra every day can cause demonic beings and weird ghosts throughout the world to settle down and stop harming people. The substance and function of the Sharangama mantra are all-encompassing. It can be said that within the mantra can be found the entirety of Buddhism's teachings and meanings. If you can understand the Sharangama mantra, then you have understood the essence of Buddhism's esoteric teachings. All the inconceivable wonders and esoteric phenomena in the universe are contained in the Sharangama mantra. If you master the Sharangama mantra, then you don't need to study the esoteric school's white teaching, black teaching, yellow teaching, red teaching or any other teaching. This is the ultimate method of samadhi and the most esoteric dharma. Unfortunately, no one really understands this esoteric dharma. No one even recognizes it. Most people study it but cannot absorb it, they can only recite it but don't know its meanings. Basically it's not necessary to know the meanings of mantras, you need only realize that they are an ineffable efficacious language. Being able to recite the Sharangama mantra is a benefit to all beings. Not being able to recite it, you cannot offer that benefit to beings. Quickly learn it, memorize it, investigate and understand it. Then you will be doing what Buddhist disciples should do. The very best is for those who want to recite the Sharangama mantra to do it for the sake of the entire world, transfer all the merit to the whole world. There isn't anything more important in Buddhism than the Sharangama mantra. The Sharangama mantra is a sure sign of the proper dharma. The existence of the Sharangama mantra ensures the existence of the proper dharma. When the Sharangama mantra is gone, the proper dharma is gone. Those who cannot recite this mantra are not worthy of being Buddhist disciples. The Sharangama mantra is nicknamed, Six Month Stupor, because for most people it takes a half year of diligent recitation to get it memorized. Those of us who can recite the Sharangama mantra have been planting and nurturing good roots for countless eons. Being able to memorize it perfectly and never forget it is evidence of those good roots. Without good roots, not only will you not be able to recite it,
You will never even hear of the existence of the Sharangama Mantra, or if you hear of it, you won't understand it and won't be able to recite it. Truly, then, those who can recite it by heart do have great good roots. The Sharangama Mantra is a Dharma door difficult to encounter in billions of eons. For every line we learn and understand, we activate one part of its power. But, then, we must actually put it into practice. However, it's not that you try to make use of the mantra's vast efficacy and tremendous power. If you use this dharma but you don't hold the precepts like most people who aren't clear about anything and casually kill, steal, are lustful, lie, and indulge in intoxicants, and who only recite the five great hearts mantra when some crisis happens then you are defiling the dharma and there is no merit in that. If you insist on trying to control the ghosts and order the dharma protectors around, then you're just going to be increasing your own karmic offenses. You will bring calamities down upon yourself. Therefore, the first criterion for people who want to cultivate a dharma is to hold the precepts and place emphasis on developing virtuous conduct. You must not fight, be greedy, seek, be selfish, pursue your own advantages, or lie. If your virtue in the way is insufficient but you pretend to be a sage who can transmit teachings, or pass yourself off as the leader of a nation, then your behavior is unacceptable. Nowadays everyone is interested in getting the most magic out of mantras, but they are not attentive to their own moral character. And so in fact their recitation will be ineffectual. Therefore, those who study the Sharangama Mantra Dharma must be proper in their behavior, proper in their intent must not have defiled thoughts, and must not do impure deeds. They should be very attentive to cultivating purity. If on the one hand they cultivate the Sharangama mantra and on the other hand they don't follow the rules, then they will get themselves into deep trouble. Everyone should pay close attention to this point. If your intent is not proper and your conduct is not proper, then the Vajra treasury bodhisattvas will lose their respect for you and won't protect you. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are compassionate and would not hurt any living being or harm beings out of anger. But their attendants, the Dharma protectors, gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits will become enraged. Those evil ghosts and evil spirits, upon seeing you cultivating the mantra while committing offenses, will bring disaster and harm down upon you, will make you feel very uncomfortable, will cause you to get in grave trouble, or make you have to undergo a series of misfortunes or a series of retributions. This is really no joking matter. Therefore you must eat vegetarian food and purify yourself. Most of all your mind must be pure. Don't have defiled false thoughts. Maintain physical purity and don't practice defiling dharmas. At all times guard your purity. Don't commit even the slightest infractions of the rules. Reciting the Sharangama Mantra is more valuable than any amount of gold. Reciting the mantra once is equivalent to tons of gold. But your recitation shouldn't be motivated by greed. If you hold the precepts, then you won't be jealous or obstructive. You won't be greedy or angry and your recitation of the mantra will generate pervasive responses and massive benefits. But if your behavior doesn't accord with the rules, the dharma protecting good spirits will stay far away from you and when something happens to you they won't pay any attention. Therefore, those who recite the Sharangama mantra shouldn't be cunning or behave in ways that continually create offenses. At all times they should be open and public-spirited. They should strive to benefit others, not themselves. They should cherish the ideals of bodhisattvas and cultivate the practices of bodhisattvas. The Sharangama Mantra is extremely efficacious, but it is not that easy to master. First of all, you cannot be selfish. Next, you cannot be out to get your own private gains. You have to be magnanimous and devoid of selfish thoughts. You have to be impartial and not prejudiced. You have to be willing to sacrifice yourself for the sake of others.